James O'Keefe did a report recently from the Washington Correction Center for Women. It's a women's prison in Washington state. We've heard reports before about the uh, WCCW, that's the Washington Correction Center for Women. We've heard reports that transgender inmates, meaning biological men who were housed with the women, were raping women. The reports were reported, but there was always a little bit of blurry substantiation. Was this an allegation? Not that not that we doubted whether it was true. It's just when you're a journalist, you have to have the absolute proof of what you're reporting. Or you have to say, we've heard these reports, but they're unsubstantiated. O'Keefe talked to some of the inmates, the actual women who are incarcerated in, um, in this prison, talked to them about the transgender inmates, these males who are being housed with the women. And this is one of the most truly shocking videos that I've seen in a long time. God bless James O'Keefe for doing this. Take a look. So we have men rapists, men murderers, child rapists, men who have killed women and are in prison for raping and killing women who get put in our room. James O'Keefe, OMG News here. Have you heard of the Washington State Correctional Center for Women, which has been in the news for its policy to place men who identify as women in the same prison, sometimes even the same cell as biological women? Imagine coming to your room one day and you're in close custody and you turn around and there's a man standing up peeing in the toilet because you have the bathroom in your room and see to you. What? There's nothing you can do. What you just heard and what you're about to hear are multiple inmates describing their experiences with transgendered women, formerly known as men, within the women's prison. WCCW has been the tip of the spear with inclusivity in the prison system. To protect the at-risk individuals involved, we've taken steps to conceal the identities of the sources and the inmates. I know there's some common sex with women. There was some, like, assaulting, but no one reported it. Normally in institutions you have segregations are always going to apply, no matter what institution that you're at, all across America. But somehow in this institution, they are adapting ways to apply these so-called mandated laws that came out of nowhere to prohibit segregation for certain individuals. Let's just say sex offenders. Usually sex offenders are not in general population. They're always in a population of their own. Some of these men are not confused. They're just manipulating the system. But it's not equal because we don't get the same care and treatment that the trans get in here. Yeah, because you don't think it's special bras, special everything, special... Uh, everything. They kind of cater to the trans community. All you have to do is say that you are a woman, that you uh, now, when you're in county, say that you identify as a woman and you can come straight to here from county. You don't, the guys don't even have to go to the men's prison first. What? These, some of these men know that they're men. They're not trying to be a woman. They just say that to come here, to have sex with women, during their prison sentence. There's nothing you can do but say you're gonna kill yourself and then go down to the crazy unit to get out that room. That's and if you refuse to go back in there, you get a major, you get in trouble. I told all this to the assistant secretary. What'd they say? They just think they're gonna look into you. I shouldn't have to go to the ward and back there because I don't want to live with the man. I don't, I don't have anything against them. I just don't want to sleep in there with them. We wrestled over the decision to do this story. It was a painful and difficult one because despite our best efforts, the possibility of retaliation always exists. But the thought of letting this continue and allowing women who are confined to be raped with impunity was unconscionable to us and the women themselves, knowing the risks, agreed to let their interviews be used. My safety is now in jeopardy because I cannot voice my freedom of speech, but it doesn't apply anymore because now they're implementing this new gender equality role that forces us to conform to what they want us to believe in about the transgender. I've heard some of these men talk about how they would want to get a girl pregnant so that the girl could form a lawsuit against 
WCCW and say that he raped her and he's willing to go along with it. He's pretty much the mastermind behind his own scandal. And it's been a few of them who sat and talked about these certain types of things to do in order to get a... Well, so, so, so the slang word that they're calling it is a million dollar baby. A million dollar baby play. That's the, that's the slang term that they're using. And this is something that you really, really need to raise awareness to. A lot of the men and the, the women, the, the men institution, are literally coming up with strategies in order to conform to the transgender thing. They're taking all the necessary steps that they have to in order to get on the applications and the lists and things like that to go through the whole process just to get here, just to do that. We don't have a voice. We don't have a leg to stand on. Anytime we voice these types of things, we are met with a ridicule, targeting, uh, uh, bias, uh, uh, punishment, uh, 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 solitary confinement. The medical here at WCCW is the poorest in the country. We don't get our needs met. The men have better action at getting all of their needs met versus a woman going through menopause. She can't even get an estrogen shot for her menopause to deal with hot flashes and the different things going on with the woman's body, but a man can get it? No, no. It, that shouldn't even be in America. And I know America is the land of opportunity and dreams and all of that things, but no. Our hearts go out to uh, the, those, the trans community as they are under attack right now. But this is a president who has said many times before he has their backs. He will continue to have their backs. Uh, and he will continue to fight for them. And his record shows that. We reached out to Washington Corrections Center for Women to Public Disclosure Coordinator Melissa Johnson for comment, and we still have not heard from her. Perhaps the citizen journalist OMG Army could raise some questions and ask for comment themselves. Ugh. Does that just gut you? God bless James O'Keefe and these women. I mean, this is an incredibly courageous thing that these women are doing from inside this prison because they could face retaliation at every level. They could face retaliation from other inmates, but more importantly, they could face retaliation from the administration of this prison. Political retaliation. This is gut-wrenching. And where, by the way, is Black Lives Matter? Where are like the defund the police and abolish the prisons people? Because the, the defund the police and abolish prisons people always say that it's a violation of fundamental human rights to incarcerate anybody. But this is an actual violation of fundamental human rights to forcibly incarcerate someone and allow them to be raped with impunity by a man claiming to be a woman so that he's placed in a cell with an actual woman. And yet these, 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 these radically leftist, neo-Marxist organizations that claim to be against prisons don't say a word. Hi guys, it's Liz Wheeler. Don't forget to watch my show, The Liz Wheeler Show, every night at 7 p.m. on The First TV. You can download the free First TV app or you can visit thefirsttv.com slash Liz and start watching today.